Next, we have have a system in place to identify any client that are politically exposed persons, so PEP. So you want to make sure that all staff and yourself have a very good un understanding of how to identify a PEP. So it doesn't have to be word for word, textbook answered understanding of a PEP. You just have to have a, a reasonable understanding of PEP and know what to do in the circumstances of if you have a PEP and know how to highlight a client that is a PEP. And I would say again, make sure that you download the AML guidance on the ICB website for what a PEP is. Keep that under staff training and make sure that's part of your procedures that staff have to read and understand every year that PEP is included in there. So have a guidance document on PEP and circulate that to all staff and document the fact that you have done that. Next, inform ICB so you're included on the trust and company services provider register. So here, there's some guidance here that I've just pulled up that I will leave a link to below that you can check. So this here shows you who should register. So for instance, you need to register with HMRC for supervision if any company or sole practitioner whose business is to form companies or other legal persons. So if you are doing that for, for somebody else, then you need to register here. Provide a registered office, business address, correspondent address, admin address, partnership or other legal law arrangement. If you are providing a registered address for these, for these types of companies, then yes, you need to register also. If you act or arrange for another person um, to act as a director or secretary of a company, you need to register. Partner for other legal persons, you need to register. Trustee of an express trust or similar legal arrangement, you need to register. Nominee shareholder for another person unless the other person is a company listed on a regulated market, which is subject to acceptable disclosure requirements. So again, if you are not sure whether or not you are hitting any of these and you need to register, ring the AML helpline and they will tell you whether or not you need to register. And I would pay particular attention if you're an individual who is providing services to a charity because I believe you need to be registered in that circumstance also. So yes, I will leave this below for you. So let's move on. Complete client due diligence on all clients and keep up to date. So, so on top of the AML online checklist there, I have a file which is a client due diligence file and I complete one of those for um, the individual. So if they're a director, if they're a sole trader, etc. I complete a form there and if they are a company then I complete a form on them too. So I could have, if I've got two directors who run a company I could end up with three client due diligence checklists. So two, one for the individuals, so there'd be two there because there's two directors and then one for the limited company. So I definitely recommend that you have a form there and again if we go to this AML checklist over here we have a client due diligence record and you can see there's two if you look closely. One for individuals and sole traders and one for company and trust charities. So if we have a look at this just here when it loads, there we go. So I would use the ICB template and just complete this. So it, you've got details such as the name of the client, the address, the trading address if it's different, identity of the person authority of the person instructing you etc proof of identity so you can list there the verification checks that have been undertaken the name of the service provider or agent and all of that information and again sign and date it and have the name of the mlro on there so i would be treating aml as highly as running the rest of your business you know, it's really really important that that you do this and if you want to read through the reasons as to why, then th there's plenty of guidance on here. And if not, I have plenty of guidance that I can distribute at any time to anybody who's looking to read in further into it. And I'll try and answer as many questions as I can um, were possible. So yeah, feel, feel free to put those in the comment section as well. Now, you want to have as part of your staff policies and procedures a note to say that if, for instance, you cannot meet the client due diligence checks, then you may have to consider either decide to de decline service with that client, cease trading with that client, so sending them a um, letter of disengagement. Again, I would ask for um, guidance with the AML um, supervision under ICB or any other supervisory body 
um, what to do in that scenario because there may be additional reasons why you've chosen to cease trading with that client and if so you just want to make sure that you're taking the right steps you're doing things in the right order to cease trading there so have that in your policies what you would do if for instance you were not able to obtain proof of id and proof of address of a client so if you ask them for this information and they said we are not sending it to you no no that's too much information or whatever reason that they stated what would you do in that circumstance and have you got it documented down so next okay complete ongoing monitoring of clients so this this is really really important and my top tips here would be if you've obtained documentary evidence of proof of identification of clients are you keeping a note on when um, those documents expire so do you have a spreadsheet where it states that that documentation expires on this date and if so are you then chasing the client for further documentation after so for instance if a driving license expires are you then asking them for a passport or the updated version of that driving license and sometimes it's a check for you sometimes it's a check for the client because sometimes they haven't realized that something has expired and they need to do something about it so you want to be monitoring clients on a regular basis and this isn't an annual thing this is a really monthly um, if not more frequent thing so you want to be making sure that you've got all the documentation up to date so for instance in my scenario I regularly ask my clients are there going to be any changes next month what's going to be happening you know where are you taking the business what's going on etc and I'm not just asking out of curiosity I'm asking to make sure that there's no changes in legal structure there's no changes I need to be aware of there's no changes in terms of the the client's position are there going to be changes in um, ownership directors etc what's just what's going on so when I'm making those questions to my clients, I'm keeping a note of the fact that I'm asking these questions and I actually have a checklist as part of doing my month end management accounts where I ask those questions and make sure that that is completed alongside um, the management accounts. That's just a, <laughs> another tip. Now, complete enhanced due diligence when required. So again, if a client has um, a risk rating of high what additional documentation are you obtaining on that client? Are you obtaining two um, forms of documentation or an additional form of documentation? Are you writing down the fact that they are high? Are you writing down what you have done? So have you searched on Google? Have you obtained um, further research? And is that documented? And again, if you're not sure when you should apply enhanced due diligence, then again, check with the, um, the ICB, check with the AML helpline to make sure that you have a good understanding or ask them to point you in the right direction for where to find that on the website, for instance, if you can't find it, because they are there to help. Now, if you, if you do have questions about um, enhanced due diligence and what information you would need, put it in the comments section below. And I can always do an updated video after this just to answer some of these questions after talking with the ICB. So let's let's do that. that I think that would be quite useful to a few members. Next, follow the correct procedures for relying on third party client due diligence. So again, if you are relying on third party for client due diligence, have you written that down? Do you have the appropriate documentation? So if you are doing that, is it in the contract between you and that third party for instance and is, is that contract signed and is it saved things like this so again they can't take your word for what you have done you need to document everything and I just I just go down the route of it's better to over document than under document and all of this takes time it does 100% it takes time and it's, it's a task in itself to do but it's not worth the risk of non-compliance I would say so next, report discrepancies between information held on beneficial ownership register at company's house with information collected as part of the client due diligence process for new clients. So again, if if I see a limited company that wants my services, one of the checks that I will undertake is I'll go to company's house and I will print information off from there with information about the directors, information about when their accounts were last submitted and what that business does because sometimes when I look at a limited company it might be in an industry that I don't want to service so I might not be a specialist in in that area and I don't want to take that on for instance so I will be looking at that as part of my own research on a company I'd check those with significant control and I'd also make a note of those that own the business so 
in some circumstances you might find that actually another company owns that company and you've got to keep going through the layers and layers and layers until you find out who owns that company but when you're doing this make sure that you're documenting the fact that you're doing this and that you've documented who owns what have a company structure have an excel spreadsheet of the structure if you have to but make sure that it is documented and when you find out who the owners are then you want to be getting that documentation of them so you've got to do the client due diligence on those individuals who own the business so proof of identity proof of address etc and if you're unsure as to what documentation you need then put it in the comment section below and again i'll answer the question or oh, we can do an updated video here to answer those questions for you